Hi, welcome to the mailbag segment again. Yes, we're straight into it. Here we go. This one comes from Sylvan Mania. Sorry, Sylvain, because um, this one was the 1st of March. Mm, it's been sitting around here for a while. <laughs> Priority. Oops, yeah, I'm sure it got here on time. Um, slack ass me hasn't uh, opened it. So thank you very much, Sylvain. And, well, what do we got here? Here we go. Whoop. Obsolete electronics, you know we love obsolete electronics, printed matter, parts, and SACM bag. Nah, I'm sure that's just the generic form. There you go. Let's have a look. Obsolete parts, we do love obsolete parts here on the EV blog. Everyone loves obsolete parts. Maybe it's uh, some vintage tech or something like that. Let's have a look. What do we got? Oh, there's a box inside a box. We have a... Transformer. Whoa, that's a weird one. Uh, but yeah, it's got one of those uh, weird overseas plugs. Linear Transformer. What do we got here? Let's have a look. Whoa. Whoa. What's that? Looks like something from a car. Two times twenty. Oh, that's. There we go. Two times twenty-one plus four, uh, three watts. So is that like an audio amp or something like that? That, that, that looks Russian. There we go. CCCP. We've got some Russian stuff. Let's have a look. We've got... Whoa, what is this? What is this? Ancient. I have no idea what those cans are. They're... Uh, oh, they're actually... Uh, got leads on all sides. Look at that. Ancient. Just a, um, a tin plate. Of course, no solder mask, nothing like that. Absolutely ancient. I wonder what that plugs into. I guess we'll find out. I've got some ancient, ah, oh, ancient parts here. What, oh, man? Look at these. It's got that crusty old smell. Hang on. Oh yeah, crusty old part smell. I won't uh, take those out just yet. But we have a whole bunch of. Maybe there's a note in here. Yes, there is. Let's read the note. It's teardown time again. Hello from France. I follow your blog since a long time. My main hobby is collecting unusual electronics. Awesome. From pacemakers to avionics, including broadcast cameras and any kind of stuff that is not available at your local retailer. I include in this parcel a Yugoslavian-made digital multimeter. Wow. Awesome. With its power supply and user manual. I'll have something for today's Teardown Tuesday because this... It's not Mailbag Monday, it is Teardown Tuesday, and I've started late. It's 3.18pm. Oh, so I was hoping to actually find something in the mailbag to tear down. So <laughs> here we go, great. It will be great teardown review, so it may contain lots of weirdness. Whoa. For a quick teardown, you have a blinker module from a Russian Lada car. All right. <laughs> made, made sure to check the power rating formula engraved on the box and a special factory logo hybrid modules you will find inside. I also include a circuit board from a Soviet, ah, electronic calculator, an Iskra 111. I think I may have heard of that, actually, featuring unique low-integration hybrid modules. So that's what they are. There you go, low-integration hybrid modules. Neat, from an electronic calculator. A bag of random Soviet parts, because I believe such things must be... Such things must be somewhat rare to find. Make sure you check out my Flickr photo stream. I have thousands of nerd porn related photos. There you go, folks. I will um, no doubt post this uh, link down below so you can directly click on it. But um, check out um, Sylvain's uh, photos of all his retro porn. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Sylvain. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Probably not. You know what I'm like with pronunciations. I absolutely suck at it. So let's uh, have a look at it. This, oh, we get the manual and everything. Look at this. Fantastic. Brilliant. Oh, look at that. There's the block diagram. Ta-da. Brilliant. Oh, and schematic. 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 We're in. We're in like Flynn. Look at that. I'll have to um scan that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll um, scan this in and I'll put it up as a uh, PDF um, available rather than you having to uh, squint. Everyone having to squint in HD there. Lots of, oh look, some uh, JFETs on the input there. Have we got? Oh, there we go. There's the input protection circuitry. Anyway, um, 
may or may not go through that. What we want to do is have a look at this puppy and uh, we'll maybe the subject of today's Teardown Tuesday. So I may not do anything with it in this mailbag. So sorry about that. But uh, tough titties. Everyone will have to watch it on the uh, Teardown. In fact, this may actually go up before the... Uh, oh, look at that. May go up before the uh, mailbag. Brilliant. Oh. That is, that's terrific. Oh, that's a bit, that's a bit crusty, that range switch. But uh, looks like, what is that, a uh, lead display up there? Check it out. All right. It's got a 2,000 volt range. Very nice. But that's a really unusual. 20 microamp range, full scale. Fantastic. You don't get that much these days. That's very nice. Right up to 2 amps. This is actually quite a useful meter. I wonder what the specs are. This isn't bad, folks. Check out the specs. Look, plus minus 0.2% of reading, 0.1% full scale. Uh, temp code from 0 to 55 is 0.2% uh, per uh, 10 degrees. <laughs> Kelvin. There you go. Terrific. That's not a bad multimeter at all. I wonder uh, what is the age of this thing. Has it got a uh, got a, like a copyright? No, no, I don't see like. Uh, copyright age on there. Is there a date on the schematic at all? This is in really good nick. I mean, both the meter and the uh, manual. Fantastic. Look, there's no yellowing on that or anything. All right, let's pop this puppy open, shall we, and uh, see what we get. It's a blinker module from a Russian larder. All right. <laughs> Ta-da! Look at that. Electromechanical. Brilliant. This is really rather... Fascinating. We've got ourselves uh, five terminals here. I have no idea what uh, voltage a larder car works on. I'm assuming it's a single uh, 12 volt lead acid, just like um, other, uh, well, most other cars anyway. Looks like these two up here are the contacts, obviously. There's our contact. And uh, that is so. Let's have a look under there. Ah, look. We've got some uh, red solder mask under here. Look at that. It's like, well, it's actually more than solder mask. It's like it's um, conformally coated or something. It's been put on there after the thing's been soldered. So it's like it's been like painted on. Um, if anyone knows what type of uh, material um, that is, is it like a, is it like a, you know, like a similar, uh, like a polymer solder mask or a, or something, or is it just a lacquer or whatever um please let us know if you know your vintage electronics and that ladder cars but um yeah there those contacts i would have thought that they would just be um well contacts i wouldn't think they would be going to anything so that's uh that's kind of weird i didn't expect those two terminals there to bugger off over to this what looks like that looks for all the world like a resistor um network but obviously it's not it's some sort of a uh, hybrid um i would assume some sort of hybrid uh, semiconductor maybe we could uh, if anyone's got any data on that is that the, is that a date code like 83 uh 10th month i guess um 83 perhaps uh anyway we've got ourselves a trim pot down here which has been sealed that obviously sets the uh blinking rate on this thing and a couple of large caps We've got, uh, is that a, uh, is that some sort of uh, diode? I assume that's some sort of um, either uh, Zena or uh, uh, regular diode. Don't know. And these look like uh, big ass resistors, I'm assuming. I can get in there and measure those. Are there any values on those? Not really. It's like K12 is the type, I guess. And so. I don't know, they're sort of like a metal can with uh, end caps on them. Um, and then we've got ourselves a transistor over here by the looks of it. It's a K18148. Maybe we can look that, or is that a KT? That could be a KT8148. And, uh, well, there you go, a couple of other resistors down there. And that's our blinker circuit. But yeah, I reckon they're some sort of hybrid module or something. I'm just, just based on the sheer number of... Um, uh, pins on there, and uh, I don't know. They're certainly doing 
something, some sort of, well, you know, they're not like going to be a um, IC or anything like that. It's not going to be like, it'll just be like a transistor array or something like that would be my guess. I don't know. Um, this stuff is uh, certainly very ancient. We've got ourselves a third contact up there. So it shorts out those two and then it jumps up to the, so it's a um, single pole double throw. And then that one comes down to, oh, where? Where does it come down to, actually? Somewhere in there. Can't see it. Anyway, there's our coil wire going down in there. It's got like a bit of heat shrink tubing coming over. It's coming from this uh, sort of uh, ceramic network over here. And then it's just being held in place there. And the other winding is also down the bottom with some heat shrink tubing. And that one's connected over to one of the contacts. Um, there you go. And by the way, you Yanks may not uh, have heard that term before, blinker. Um, they're called that here and obviously in uh, uh, France, I guess. These are called blinkers. In the US, I think they're called the indicator light or, you know, the uh, turn signal or something like that. Yeah, here we call them blinkers. It's like, ah, turn on your blinky uh, mug. Anyway, um, yeah, like um, I thought these were, um, I don't know my car electronics, but I was under the impression that these things were um, typically uh, thermal uh, based uh, things where, you know, you uh, turn them on and they short out and they heat up and then they switch off and then, you know, it's sort of a mechanical um, action. But this one is uh, certainly electronic. I mean, it appears to have some sort of, um, you know, some sort of transistor or control array in there. It's actually fairly complicated if it's just a blinker module. I mean, I, ugh, gee, yeah. I don't know. Please, anyone, I could attempt to reverse engineer it, but that would take me forever. Um, need to get on to other mailbag items. But anyway, if you've got info on that, um, then please put it in the comments, because that is terribly interesting. I do like that, even the pinouts, um, so I can at least uh, uh, power it up and give it a go. And here you go, here's this Iskra um, triple one that this uh, hybrid module is out of and uh, there it is big huge clunking uh, desktop calculator we're talking 1972 good year 72 um, 12 nixie tubes plus sign one memory register fixing coma 220 volts ac and uh, i think yeah look at that let's have a look at that we can see all those cards plugged in there there we go yep that's the card all right there's there's the nixie tubes look at that all the cabling running through it, classic 1972 vintage um, Soviet Iskra 111 electronic calculator. Awesome. Thanks, Sylvan. That's great. Next up, we have one from Richard J. Stanton. Thank you very much, Rich. wonder what that symbol is. Is that your family crest or is that your company uh, symbol or whatever? He's from Oceanside, California, 92054. Can't say I've been to Oceanside, California. So, uh... Thank you very much, Rich. I won't call you Dick. T-shirt. Awesome. A ceramic mug. Oh, I've got a, I've got a mug, even though I don't drink, drink coffee. Great for holding uh, screwdrivers and stuff in. A flashlight. Woohoo! I always like flashlights and supplies. Hmm. Let's check it out. T-shirt. Fantastic. I love this. All right. I've had this one for a while too. Sorry about that. This one's from May. Oh no, May 22nd. That's not too long. That's not too long at all. All right. Beautiful. Oh, we have a letter. We should read the letter first. That's a polite thing to do, is it not? I hope your address is not on. Yeah, your address is on here. Don't put your address on your letter. Otherwise, I've got to to edit this thing. All right, see, I've got to black out the address up there. Anyway, his email's there for everyone to email him. <laughs> if you want to put your email on there, probably shouldn't cover up emails. What are you going to do? Get spam? Get the spammers to watch my blog just in case they can harvest a couple of emails from it. <laughs> Dear Dave, I really enjoy your EEV blog. I was at the uh, 2013 Delmar Electronics Show in Delmar, California. Never heard of Delmar. There you go. I didn't know there was an electronics show there. Picked up some good stuff I thought you might enjoy. Excellent. Is this, I assume it's like a trade industry trade show kind of thing? Um, if so, um, please tell us what's there. I also enclosed two sample advertising packages from a company that my friend Bob Green owns. Powerpack. All right. Powerpack develops customers' 
packaging manufactures the packaging equipment and provides packaging materials. Additionally, I include a pen from another friend, Adrian Pelkus, good day Adrian, who owns A Squared Technologies, good name. A Squared Technologies assists inventors to go from ideas to market. Oh, I hope it doesn't include patents. Oh, anyway, check them out. Thank you very much, Rich. Awesome. Let's check out this stuff. All right. It's nicely packed. Look at that. Tissue paper. Oh, it's all happening. Well done. Oh, there, there's, there's my coffee mug. There's my coffee mug. Here we go. Even though I don't drink coffee. Oh, made in China. Norwood? What's Norwood? No idea. Cons... Concisis. Concisis? Man, electronics Manufacturing Services. There you go. Fantastic. I love coffee mugs. Great for putting screwdrivers in. I'm telling you. Fantastic. Look at this. Bobby Dazzler. All right. And more stuff. Power Pack Blister Official Camshell Opener. What sort of camshell? Camshell? Seal the deal, a rotary sealer, quality camshells. Well, there you go. I guess if you're into your packaging solution, then fantastic. Um, yeah. I, oh no! Look, look. These bloody annoying, um, uh, sealed. I don't know what you call this type of packaging. I, oh, the name escapes me at the moment. But they're bloody annoying. This is the most frustrating thing on the planet. I swear. All this, like this heat sealed around the outside. You can't possibly open these things without a bloody pair of scissors. What? Whoever invented these should be hung, drawn and quartered. They really should be uh, disposed of medieval style because oh, these things are just awful. I hate stuff that's packaged in this. Garbage. Absolute garbage. Oh, we have a nice pad. There we go. And uh, ta-da! And it's a camshell Official camshell opener for open. Oh, right. Oh, look at that. There we go. We have ourselves a blade. All right. Ah, right. Okay, I get it. It's like a Stanley knife. What we would call a Stanley knife here. So you whip it like that, and it's shoot, opening your packages. Neat. Head of the pack. Look at that. Brilliant. Reminds me of the old uh, dickhead. Um, <laughs> sorry, for Australians will know exactly what I'm talking about, and not being insulting, the famous uh, Dick Smith, Dick Head. And uh, I assume that's his mate, uh, Bob Green, who founded that in 1984, is it? Who owns uh, Power Pack Industries, but there you go, head of the pack, lovely. Doll, it just occurred to me that they're actually advertising the camshell packaging. This is what they're called, clamshells. And, uh, but, but of course you can get uh, clamshells, I think, don't quote me, being the packaging specialist that I am, not, um, that you can get ones that just, you know, uh, close and they're just like, uh, you know, just uh, have a hook or sealed at one end or something and, you know, not just completely sealed around the outside like that. Annoying. Anyway, that's a clamshell. This is a blister card pack. These are, it reminds me of the old days, you know, you go down to Tandy slash Radio or Rat Shack Electronics and you picked up your two resistors in your blister card pack. These can be annoying sometimes because you peel them off like this and somebody needs to invent one that, you know, you always try and get there at the right angle and sort of dig it in just so that it doesn't stick on like that because that's ridiculous. These things are so annoying. Not quite, not nearly as annoying as the camshells, but anyway, they're not bad at all. But there you go, that's uh, Bob's business card. G'day, Bob. Oh, look at this. Dave L. Jones, personalised pen. Fantastic. From A Squared, well, uh, they're advertising. He's made uh, from A Squared Technologies uh, Manufacturing Services. There you go, they're uh, A Squared Tech. Dot com and I've got my own personalised pen, Dave L. Jones. Got a nice rubber grip, don't mind that at all. It's quite ergonomic. Very nice. Twist, wonder what, uh, oh, there, there we go. DPSS Lasers Inc. So they've obviously uh, laser engraved that. Might whack my macro lens on, get a close up. And there it is, check that out. I guess that, uh, yeah, it looks, I guess the laser's gone along there, and uh, so it looks like they put this red coat in on the outside, and then the laser's able to, I don't know what uh, that red 
coating is actually and but uh, clearly that's what they uh, burn off with the uh, laser it's just some sort of you know lacquer or uh, something like that perhaps if anyone knows the uh, technology of that uh, coating please let us know and I you know you wouldn't need much uh, laser power at all to uh, zap that off I'm sure now I'm just wondering when they engrave this because it's a curved surface I wonder if like either they have the pen in a jig which then rotates under the laser like that and it's just maybe a fixed axis like that or whether or not the, a uh, the laser actually sort of you know goes around on a slight angle or whether or not it just sits there like that and the laser just goes x y and just uh, maybe compensates for oh I don't even know if it needs to compensate for the curved angle the curved surface that it's engraving I assume it would have to compensate a little bit otherwise everything would uh, turn out a little bit uh, a bit curved but uh, there you go if anyone knows if anyone's seen those uh, you know laser engraving machines I assume that they don't do anything complex I think you just compensate for that in software it's just like got an XY uh, laser just like a regular laser engraver I don't think they'd have anything special going on there and there's nothing like a uh, trade show swag is there you know you go to these trade shows and there's just uh, all sorts of stuff on offer DigiKey hello DigiKey they're not sending the uh, their uh, printed catalog in big bags anymore so uh, they're in my good books made in China why not made in the US you're a proud American company DigiKey why the hell are you ordering this sort of stuff what is this anyway it's like a holder what is it for business cards or something I don't know some sort of stand it might come in useful for something though more swag we're not done yet that's a pretty solid box don't what oh, oh, bloody hell <laughs> it's a pen bonanza folks <laughs> look at this. how many pens did he steal from the bloody every single stand unbelievable well I'm never going to be short of pens again this is awesome because I'm always running out of bloody pens no matter how many you get they're just never around when you need them and that one's got a ball on top what the hell ah. <coughs> broke it folks I just broke the ball off we have a globe on the top what a wank who which company is responsible Oh, it's just got some pins there. Oh, there we are. This is just like a watch pin. It's just like a watch pin. Which company is responsible for this abomination? Really? A name and shame. Name and shame. WE Secure IP, an intellectual property destruction and e waste recycling company. No, I'm sorry. That's a fail. Oh, hidden in amongst the pins. Look, got a syringe. Beautiful. PCB libraries. New dimensions for EDA. Hey, there you go. Like steroids for your CAD tool. PCBlibraries.com. No, I was completely suckered in, folks. I thought <laughs> this is actually very cute. I like it. It's actually a pen. I didn't notice it through the bag. There. That's great. I love it. Syringe pen. Never seen that before. Brilliant. Well done. That's a thumbs up, folks. If you want to see the difference between a pass and a fail, there it is, right there. That's just pathetic. Oh, this one, that's cute. I like it. And let's see what DigiKey have been able to buy from China. Yes, it's a pen. You rotate it, it comes out. But it's also a crappy little pathetic torch. Look at that. Oh, no, look, it's got the DigiTech logo. It's got the DigiKey logo. Look. There you go, look at that. Oh, what a complete wank. There you go. So we've gone from, where is it? Kind of cool, right? To, where is it? Oh, I tossed it. Complete fail to complete wank. DigiKey. Oh, come on, fellas. Give me a break. And check this out. I've zoomed it right out on my camera. I've turned the lights off. I'm looking up on the wall there, and I can project this rubbish up onto my wall as big as I like. Look at that. That's pure wank DigiKey components. Ah, oh, unbelievable. I could do like hand puppetry. How about this one? Huh? Can you read that? And if you're wondering how they do that, nothing special. All they've got is a uh, 
lens up there. There's the insert with the little wanky uh, DigiKey logo down in there. And uh, just an LED embedded, a large LED, one of those 10 millimeter ones or something, embedded in there. Oh, look at this. They're trying to outdo each other. This one, this company, who are they? Medical device packaging, uh, TransTech, Bell.com, an ITW company, one of the pack more packaging uh, stuff. Syringe print, oh no, TransTech are the syringe printers. Right, they print on syringes. There you go. But they actually have real liquid in there. Ah, they've one up the other mob. Brilliant. Ryko, look at this, as if anyone's going to hang this thing from their keychain. You've got to be kidding me. That's just it's garbage quality. Absolute. Oh my, oh my god, that is. That is pathetic. That is pathetic. And that's almost as if it's like a bulb. You know, it's almost like bulb like rather than LED. I, garbage. What else we got? Pacific Transformer. Oh, what are what are they got? Oh, they're um something uh, like another op more packaging openers. There you go. Pacific Transformer. That's got a blade in there, and uh, that's for whipping something open. Not sure what. I'm sure, people are screaming at me. I don't know. Whatever they are, I've got a lot of them. Advanced Test Equipment Rentals. They have. They went the Spirit Level option. Oh, come on. Nobody wants a little cheap ass. And with a measuring tape, nobody's going to carry around a little crap ass tape like that. At least it does, it does have Imperial and Metric. So, there you go. Eh, bit of a bonus there, but no. Oh, oh, they're so poor quality. They really are. You know, if you're going to give something away, you know, I used to trade show, they used to give away like a, you know, genuine mag light, you know. I mean, really good quality stuff or a Swiss Army uh, knife or something like that. And now we've got strips of what? Why? What am I going to do with that? What would anyone do with that? I'll give it to Sagan. Now, this has wank written all over it, folks. What the hell is this? This is like swag, mailbag swag. That's what it's all about here. What the hell does this thing do? Does it light up? Prime line, China, everything comes from bloody China. Oh, what are we... Oh, they're markers! There you go! They're, they're, sorry, they're, um... Highlighters! There you go! But it, nobody's going to use that, though. I mean, you just want your proper highlighters. The seal on that's probably crap anyway, and... Oh, I don't know. Oh, what is this? Bell.com. At least we have a clown. No clowns. Can't have clowns. Genuine 3M adhesive. Oh, has sprung for the high-end option there. What else have we got? Oh, there we go. Magnifying glass. That's at least relatively useful. Lots of distortion on that. Pretty crusty, but geez, at least you can make use of that. Fry some ants or something like that, perhaps. And then we have a see-through a ruler with a see-through window. No, we've got a couple of more rulers. Rulers are popular. Not as good as what I was giving out at the trade show. Look at this. This is how you do trade show swag. EV blog ruler. Look, it's got everything you could possibly want on there. All your conversions for your SMDs and all sorts of stuff. Fantastic. You can download this from the EV blog website. Actually, you can download the uh, Gerber. So that's at least bloody useful. Oh. Not the garbage, some of the garbage we're getting here. Hey, steel ruler, that's not bad. Tents, 50th of an inch, that's all right. It's got metric and imperial, that's not bad. See, that's doable, except for the fact that it's not an end ruler. See, I made this as an end ruler, so you can use it as a depth ruler as well. So you can't do that on this one. Bit of a fail, but anyway, is that made in USA ruler? But that's not bad. I reckon that's probably the winner out of the swag. We're almost done. There's another one of those rulers with the see-through magnifying thing. I mean, they're just not that great, really. Ah, oh, don't know. T-shirt! Brilliant! What have I got? What have I got? Here we go. Let's have a look. I'm going to have to zoom out on this one. Ta-da! Who's it from? Ah, oh, it's the uh, oh, surfing, surfing ape. Awesome. 
There we go, 2013 Del Mar Electronics and Design Show. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Awesome. In his boardies and his thongs there. No, they're not flip-flops, they're bloody thongs. And uh, there you go, there's the companies who uh, sponsored it, eh, who cares? But anyway, there you go, that's the Del Mar Electronics Design Show. Thank you very much, Rich. That's great. Good look at some swag there. I love it. Oh, that's, uh, sorry, that's on the back. I just realised, what's on the front? Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, that's not nearly as good as the back. Man, anyway, you can't, be how can you beat a surfing ape? It's brilliant. Next up is a big, bright yellow one. I like it. Don't get these too often. <laughs> Destinatario. I don't know. What is that? Uh, I don't know. Is that an Italian? I guess Destination. That's Italian for destination. And it's from Gabriel Galeazzi. Gabriel Galeazzi. From Italy. From Sunusco, I guess, in Italy. Thank you very much. And let's check it out. Oh, holy crap! Oh, I could use the... Oh, excellent! Excellent, these pin jumpers! Fantastic! Thank you very much! They will come in very handy. I was about to actually order a uh, bunch of these. They're very handy for plugging in your uh, breadboard, of course. So, uh, fantastic! And what else we've got in here? It's almost it's quite flat. Oh. And uh, we have a letter. Gabrielle's from gtronics.net. Dear Dave, first of all, thanks for entertaining EV log. No worries. I hope you enjoy this prototyping board for PIC microcontrollers. Oh, I know that there are a lot of boards for PICs around. Anyway, I assume it's I assume it's Gabrielle's. Um, from, oh, I assume you can buy it from gtronics.net. I'm sure we'll find out. Um, a few years ago when I bought the Pickstart 2, as soon as I got it, I started using it for some plum preliminary testing I realized that the available free space was quite small yeah it's pretty yeah you yeah, don't get much space on there at all solder and desoldering de was a real pain in the neck for debug need to debug header yes so I decided I need a prototyping board that should be a solderless B not small but neither huge of course so that's a reasonable size it's like you know a bit small than a4 yanks don't know what I'm talking about with a4 Smaller than letter size. There we go. Simply to be um, simply to be power supplied. <laughs> Simple to power, I think he means. Debuggable without the need of a dedicated header. Uh, compatible with the most popular microchip programmers and debuggers. Took a look at the market, couldn't find. As you do, you do your roll your own. Fantastic. And I decided to develop my own board. And here is the PIC Proto board. You can power the board from a free USB port. Excellent. Um, I wonder if it's got batteries on board. I guess not. Uh, it does not need soldering to set up a test environment. It's solderless and provided with a set of breadboarding cables. Provided uh, you get a 16F887 uh, with it. Uh, lets you choose the PIC uh, VDD voltage. Very nice. I like that. Works with PICKIT2, uh, PICKIT3, ICD, and all the uh, microchip programmers. It works with any of the uh, 16F 40 pin dips. Um, Pinout compatible with the uh, 887. Um, it is reasonably small. It's provided with a small set of spare, small set of spare devices. Excellent. Has a few onboard devices, potentiometer, LED, push button, all the usual stuff. Found it useful since I can use it on laptop and I'm programming and testing. Excellent. For additional info, take a look at gtronics.net. Good on you, Gabriel. Let's have a look. Here we go. Here's some easy to open packaging. Huh? Huh? Look at that. Easy. I love it. That's what you want. Amazon-like frustration-free packaging. Pick Proto Board. Quick Start Manual. Oh, look at that. Hey, look at that. It just sits in the middle of the board like that. Neat. I like it. Oh, and there's lots of documentation goodness here of how to do all the stuff. Looks pretty good. Gone to a bit of effort there. I like it. I like the documentation. So there you go. Very nice for a PIC beginner, and it includes the schematic as well. And using the PIC Proto Board, let's take a look at the hardware. Take a look. Here we go. Ta -da! And there it is. It's it literally is a PIC Micro with two big breadboards surrounding it, and that is bloody useful. Let me tell you, I really like that. Hence, that's what all these. Uh, Jumpers are four, of course, so you can just whack those in there like that. 
the standard machine pinned machine pin header in there and you can whack those directly on the breadboard very very nice i like that very useful what's under here oh that's our adjustment oh, for the big ass pot check out the size of that big ass pot it's an absolute monster and of course you just put headers around it um, like that 0.1 inch headers and oh there we go ah right oh so it didn't break off right in packaging very nice all right and the four feet haven't been uh, supplied i guess to save um packaging space once again so that's very clever i like that very minimal um there's the um ice interface there's the usb interface down there and we've got some bypass and uh, power stuff so you can power um from the usb or a plug pack very not ah there we go there we go let's have a look at the this is really quite neat pick proto board from gtronics.net i really like it and uh check out the heatsink <laughs> here on these regulators check it out there we go we've just got some uh um sot uh, 223 uh voltage regulators there and uh just big long ass <laughs> strips like that i'm not sure how uh, thermally efficient is when it's uh that long and skinny like that but hey uh, you know it's not bad at all and it's got the key underneath for the various power options if using usb blah 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 that is a really neat little board but tell us the price son and i just checked and it's uh 49.50 uh euros so just under 50 euros plus postage without the uh pick kit although he also does sell the uh, pick kit as well to go with it if you don't have any of that so that's really quite neat rather than just have a big uh proto ball that tries to have everything and led displays and the whole you know uh, lcds and the whole um shebang then um no it's just the big ass pick down in there and then build whatever you want on there quite neat i like that check it out if you're in the market for getting into picks so thank you very much gabrielle and that's all we got time for for today's mailbag because i better get into doing a bloody teardown it never ends here on the ev blog relentless pressure to produce videos anyway um i will no doubt uh, tear down that multimeter right now so i'm not sure which of these videos will come first if you want to discuss it jump on over to the ev blog forum and if you like mailbag monday please give it a big thumbs up and i'll continue to do them as long as people keep sending me stuff anyway catch you next time wait hang on no we're not done yet we've still got one from michael nash because i haven't opened this in ever there was like april 12th or something on i feel really bad and it's a metal detector here we go quick come on it's in whacked in some box and quick 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 come on come on mailbag's already gone on long enough letter in there no nothing all right let's have a look oh yeah i can see a letter there we go we have oh 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 this looks serious ah oh. 12th of april <laughs> sorry mike his ev blog forum name is x runner yes i know mike from the forum hello from texas everything's bigger in texas enjoy your videos and forums so i thought you might like to take a look at this device i got it from the local discount chinese import tool dealer in town please open her up and tell us how the circuit does its intended job beauty all right <laughs> metal detector that's uh oh that's right i think he posted a uh, puzzler about what this thing actually did on the forum and um handheld metal detector here we go look at this Ta -da! press i guess it's not near metal no sensitivity i don't know we're gonna have to actually um yeah it's got some battery oh no there we go that's why it doesn't work don't plug it in this is terribly exciting riveting video here folks on the ev log installing batteries should edit this shit out but i don't wear ANSI approved safety goggles when replacing battery <laughs> wear safety goggles when replacing the battery oh, highly dangerous these are 12 that's not even a bloody alkaline is it it's like a carbon zinc or some crap oh man read manual before use <laughs> no thanks keep dry yeah well okay i'm not going to use it underwater keep it to reach your children i don't know Sagan might like it oh oh it goes beep goes beep and it has a light 
Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Here we go. Let's see if we can detect my... Oh, yep. There we go. Can certainly. And if I touch the knob now. Yeah. So if I turn it right down. I need to get closer. There you go. It is detecting the presence of metal. That might make an interesting gear down. There you go. Hmm. Feels really cheap. I mean, oh man, it's just like an off-the-shelf, uh, the cheapest off-the-shelf uh, two-part case you can get just held together with a couple of screws. Really, really quite, really quite dodgy. How much was it? About uh, 10 bucks or something? I don't know, something like that. But yeah, anyway, that will make an interesting teardown. So we'll wait for that next time. See ya.